And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello and happy Easter Sunday to all of you. I hope you have a great day and you will make it an even better day by listening to the Weighing In podcast all the way through because we have so much to talk about. Incredible fights last night in the UFC. 287 definitely lived up to what was expected. Even had ex-presidents there, had Kid Rock there. All kinds of things rocking on the thing. How are you doing, my man? What did you think? I'm doing good. And we talked about this on our live show is I gave it a grade and my grade was a grade. You for gave it a very high grade. better than yours. <laughs> my yeah. grade was I had an eight and a half to a nine. I thought it was a great card. I thought there was there was what I love about cards. And for me, the way I grade cards is things that are unexpected and the way that fighters fight out of situations that they probably shouldn't have been in, or when they are there, they fight through the adversity and they make their way back. And whether they win or lose, that has no no bearing on how I grade that card. It has to do with the fact that they, they made it a fight. Because I've always looked at fighting as it takes two fighters to make a fight. Sure. You can't just say, oh, that was a great fight. It was one-sided. No one's ever said, oh, that, great, that was the best fight ever. I'll give you an example. Chris Curtis and uh, Gaslam. That fight would have never been great if it wasn't the two of them. That's no right. different than Gaslam and Izzy. You need two fighters to make it a great fight. I look at other fights that were great fights in the first round, and <laughs> as the fight went on, it became not such a great fight, but those fighters dealt through, they went through some adversity in the first round, and they made it a great fight because they came back and dominated rounds two and three. So we'll get into all that, but uh, I think we start right from the main event. Before we start right from the main event, go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne. It's free. Subscribe to us. Guys, we're going to be doing more live shows, whether it's with the fights in the UFC, whether it's uh, obviously we, it's hard for us to do Bellator fights because we call, call all those fights, but uh, you know, really we're going to work on, we're going to work on some new stuff, but there is a lot of things that we'll be doing on OF. So OnlyFans.com slash Wayne in. Subscribe to us over there. It is free. We're not charging you guys. Come over there. Extra content. Fan questions available. More more interaction with our fans over there. That's why it's called OnlyFans. Well, John, let's... Uh, I'm uh, third wi- my third whiskey now deep, and we're you know we're, we're we're getting into this. We're having some fun. We had a good oh monster. I don't know how you're doing monster. What time is there? One a.m. Oh, one 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 twenty. It's one twenty in the morning. This guy's got two monsters just dialing them back. You're an animal. Ready to go, baby. You're an animal. Ready to go. You're an animal. Thank you. Got a, Thank got you. A lot of love for you brother. finally realize it. Well, I don't know. Not I don't know too, if animal is the name, but not too bright. <laughs> no, more like a jackass. Yeah, it's all right. Though. It's all right though. We, but uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump right into this uh, UFC two eighty seven Pajeda versus Adesanya two, which is actually a four. Um, yeah, <laughs> but John, great fight. I thought it was a great fight. I thought that Izzy came out. I wouldn't say he dominated the first round, but he did what he had to do. He stuck no. and moved, stuck and moved, stuck and moved. Took some shots, stuck he and moved. Did, he did the things that were necessary yep. for him to win the round, in my opinion, which he you know, he did. Not by a lot, but it was called smart, intelligent yep. fighting. He used a lot of leg kicks. He tried to eat up you know, the front leg of Alex Pereira. And you look and you go, man, he was fighting smart. And then you can take, be honest about it. Come the second round, Alex Pereira hurt him. He had him up against the cage. Adesanya did a great job of fighting his way out of it. Kind of went back to what he was trying to do in the first round. And then he got hurt again, got hurt to the body. But he kept himself composed and he saw that Alex Pereira was opening up and trying to finish him. Did the knee and had his hands down low and was starting to swing big, heavy, wide shots exploded with that right hand. It hit the target and you saw Alex Pereira stumble, you know, kind of just to the side a little bit, kind of come back. And by the time his face was coming back around, there was another right hand waiting for him. And that was the coup de gras. Let's freshen up. 
almost time to go, so it's definitely time to move. Hey, John. You use a new Mansky 4.0? Yep. But not there. Only on the pretty parts first. You gotta try it, man. I've gained two inches. Two inches? I got two big Johns in here now, baby. Oh, wow. You're a lot better looking than I remember. Here we go. And a lot bigger. That's why they call you Big John. You're pretty sexy. <laughs> There's no little John in here. Yeah, you're pretty sexy too, by the way. That's how you're going? I look pretty good down there. Huh? You actually do look good. I know. Go to manscaped.com slash weighing in to get your lawnmower 4.0. Follow the link in the description. Your balls will thank you. It's very easy, especially for young fighters, which is crazy that Alex got caught with this because what you'll see with young fighters is they get careless after they hurt someone, they rock someone, they yeah. come out and they just start becoming super, so intent on finishing super it. aggressive and they end up getting in trouble, getting knocked out. Um, it's so funny when I think of fights like this, when I think of how this fight ended, I think of uh, Pete Sell. Scott Smith. Oh, yeah. Every Scott single Smith time I think of, like, that's the fight that I think of when someone's hurt and oh, yeah. they've got him rocked. They're going to they, lose. They, they, oh, I've got him. I'm right, I'm right after him and boom, fight's over. And that's kind of where we're at right now. But look, and I said this on the live show. I hope, I don't think that Alex deserves it, but I think it's a cash cow if they don't do it right away. They've got to do the rematch. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't. I don't, yeah. I don't think Alex beats Bobby Knuckles. I don't think Alex beats. And they they were very they were very scripted how they were with Connor on getting him sure. to the title, which is smart. That's true. Sure I'm I'm yeah. I'm not knocking the UFC for doing it. I'm just simply saying they were scripted on how they did it. They got him where they needed. No, they to had get a him. plan with it. Can you know? I'm, we're going to yep. put him against guys that are going to yep. basically stand with him and try to fast track him because they had a storyline behind it from the kickboxing day. But you still have a storyline. Makes John. sense. You still have that storyline. You still have that storyline. Yeah. And in the process, though. You do. In the process. But. Yeah, I know. But here's the thing. Even though he finished Izzy the way that he finished him in the first fight, Izzy finished him worse in this fight. Yes. And that will stick with Alex through the next fight. And we've talked about confidence. We've talked about all this other stuff all the time. But I also think this is a good opportunity. Like, I'm a huge Chamaya fan. Maybe I don't come off that way. I know that I've I've said some things about him. I just I want him to make weight, which at 85 he can make the weight. I would love to see him fight somebody in the top five. Give him Cannonier. Give him. I think Bobby Knuckles is the perfect fight. If you want to fast track him to the title, let's see if all the talk that he's doing is worth it. I want to see him fight someone like like uh, Bobby Knuckles. If he can get past him, then okay, then it's warranted. Like hey, let's go. I don't know if he can. I, I just don't know if he can. I, I just, I it's think he can. stylistically, I don't think, and if I, if I was to put him against Cannoneer, uh, there's a good chance, but it, I'd still, I think he still struggles against Cannoneer. Get, okay. If you pull up, look, can, Dave, can you pull up 85, the, the rankings? <clears throat> I think Paul Acosta, I think Paul Acosta gives him a hard fight, especially if it's a five round fight. He gives him a hard fight. I'm looking at that. Like, I'm looking at Marvin Vittori might be a little bit of an easier fight because Marvin is, he's good. He's big. He can fight. He, he, and him, and, but Paulo Costa is fast, explosive, got power. Marvin Vittori is proven that he can beat Paulo Costa, but Styles, like stylistically, when Marvin hits his back Styles on the ground, sense. yeah, when Styles hit, when he hits his back on the ground, he kind of has a tendency to, just relax there. Not relax, but like he doesn't focus on getting up. Paul Acosta will focus on getting back to his feet because he doesn't want to be there at all. Marvin Vittori is, he doesn't want to be there either, but he will kind of hang out there a little bit to chase the jiu-jitsu, chase this, chase that, but he will, he will eventually try to get back up. I don't know. I, I just, I look at those, those three guys, Marvin Vittori, Jared Cannonier, Paul Acosta, those three guys, I want to see him beat one of them, but I think you shouldn't get a title shot until you bite, until you beat Robert Whitaker. 
he's the guy. He's the guy that's fought for it however many times, former champ, whatever it is. Like you've got to you've got to get past him to get to Izzy. That that's the way I look at it. There's just no other way. And have have Alex fight Izzy one more time. Yeah, you look you have that look on your face like Josh. Nah, we can't do it. Well, <laughs> Okay, I, I look at it no matter who you, who you pick in that list. You know, Chimaev is not even ranked right now in 185. Mm-hmm. Now, number three in the welterweight division. Okay, but you take a look and you go, uh, Whitaker would be, in my opinion, the toughest fight for him. Cannoneer has got decent wrestling, not good enough wrestling to stop Chimaev. Mm-hmm. Paulo Costa, very good stand-up. He's not going to stop the wrestling nope. of Chimaev. You know, Duplessis, definitely not going to stop it. Sean Strickland, he's got actually a good ground game, but he's not going to stop it. He's not going to be able to stop Chimaev and getting him down. He's going to end up on the ground fighting his way out of it. Derek Brunson's got good wrestling, but Derek is yeah. older now. He's slowing down. It's gone. Roman Delize would be tough. I think Roman Delize yeah. would be one of the toughest ones for him. So if I was going to say, I don't think it's fair to put Whitaker against Chimaev if you're saying it. Put Roman Delice against Chimaev. I believe that Roman Delice actually called Chimaev out. Did he? Did he not at a certain point? I normally don't watch fights with the sound on, so maybe he did. So I would I would like to see that one, but and I understand what you're saying with Alex against Izzy, and it, it is all of the backstory. But he didn't even win once as the champion. I get it. I understand. Uh, not even once. But I okay. So you look at Roman. Roman's at number nine. It was a very yeah. con- I would say controversial fight against uh, Marvin Vittori. Vittori. I had yeah. Roman winning the fight, <clears throat> but Sorry. whatever. It, like, I, I understand. Sorry. I understand where you're at. Um, Sorry. But if you want to fast track him, you want to if he really believes who he is which he seems to keep going on and on and on about, whether it's 170, whether it's 185. Right to Robert Whitaker. He's not even ranked. So let's go right to Robert Whitaker. I'm sorry. Well, they did, think, it, they, did it, they did it with Sugar Sean, so I can understand it. But All right. I, I don't know, I don't know what uh, Chamayev's getting paid. That's the difference. Sure. Is he getting paid because Sean restructured his contract? Now, that obviously, you're, hey, yeah, if I'm paying this, you have to fight guys like Peter Yan. And, and Sean did it right. You know, Sugar Sean, yeah, Sugar, Sugar Sean did it, it right. Um, if I go to the 185 pound weight class and I look at that, if you want to fast track him, can he beat Robert Whitaker? If he can't beat him, then we need to get him a fight in there. Whether it's Paul Acosta and him have had words, let's do that fight. That's a fight that he can win. But Paul Acosta, if you go back and you look at his fight with uh, Romero, that. There was some scrambles. There was some work. But Romero doesn't try to wrestle. You're right, but there was some wrestling involved in that. And so yeah. you're telling me that Chamayev's a better wrestler than Romero. No. No, I'm not saying that he's a better wrestler, but in MMA he's a better wrestler because he uses yeah, that's it. that's true. That's true. He does. I mean, but Romero did use it in that fight a little bit as much as he could when he got rocked. And Paulo was good at getting back up. I also look at, when I look back at Paulo's last fight against Luke... He didn't look what he looked like before, but the fact that he's got a new contract now, I expect him to be a better fighter. He's a happy yeah, man. Yeah, he's a happy man. He's making some good money. Apparently, he's the highest paid Brazilian, you know, uh, in the <laughs> UFC. Um, maybe he but is. Maybe he is. But when I look at that, I look at he's going to have to beat somebody. I don't think you can jump him right to Robert Whitaker. I just don't think you can do it. Like you've got to get him somewhere in there. Whether it's Delizzi, I think you got to go higher than that. You got to go to really, yeah. Because it otherwise he's because he, the way he's talking, he wants the next shot. So okay, well if you think you're ready for the next shot, I have to give you someone in the top five. I can't just go okay, hey, you're next. You're not even ranked right now. I got to give you somebody in there. Have you met a guy? Named I, have, I have. I <laughs> have. I have met him. I've had dinner with him. I've had lunch with him. Yeah. I've talked with him. I've been, we've had meetings in his office. I know who, I know Dana. But you've got to get him ranked in there at least one fight. Whether it's Whitaker, whether it's Vittori, whether it's Cannonier, 
I think they're going to stylistically pick somebody that he can beat, which I don't think will be Whitaker. It's going to be someone else. And if I'm Bobby Knuckles, I'm going, what the fuck? Like, fight me. Fight. Like, come, come, come get some. But it ain't going to happen. I doubt it. It ain't going to happen. So, I mean, I'm looking at somebody in there. I, if I was to bank the, the, the drama is with Paul Acosta. There's the, oh, I'll go drink some more wine before we fight. <laughs> you know, there's that. There's a little bit of the, you know, there's the banter back and forth. They've had apparently like a little bit of beef from before. So there's something there they can market. Um, yeah. You know, Robert Whitaker, he's the, he's the guy that you're not going to get much beef out of him. He's, he's a fighter. He's, he's too nice. He's like Dan Henderson, man. Like right. everyone likes to fight. say they want to fight him because Dan's one of the best, but then as soon as you get hit by him, you don't want to fight him. You go, Why did I ever sign? I saw him in, I saw him in, uh, in Temecula at the Bellator show. Oh, Jesus, yes. man. Every time I've known Dan since 97 and every time I shake his hand, I'm like, it's like, it's like, I don't know what it's like. It's like shaking steel slash really, really broken hard leather. <laughs> with a bunch of cracks. I don't even know. I don't even know what it is. It's, you know. Um, but I think I think if you have the Kamzat with whoever on the same card as Izzy and Tejeda in the in for number three, actually number five, whatever, and then you take the chance of if one of them falls off, you can slide one of them in. And obviously they'll probably slide Jemaya in. Um okay. and you go from there. But you have that right? Yeah, you, yeah, but you still have him in the on the card. Okay, he's fighting the number two guy. So, anyways, but overall, great fight tonight. We saw, we, we basically saw a repeat of the first fight, but the round didn't end. That's what we saw. Because that, right. like, remember, in second round, he heard it bad right at the very yep. end. This time, he left a little bit of leeway. So. Yep. All right, next fight. I had just a little more time. For the co-main event, we had Game Bread, Jorge Masvidal, going up against Gilbert Burns. In looking at this fight, you had to think that Gilbert Burns was the heavy favorite. You know, I think, think he, betting odds-wise, he was. And there's a reason. And, and just as we talked, you know, I thought the real problem was going to be speed. And it was. You just got to be honest when you looked at it. Masvidal is slowing down. He was never the fastest guy there was, but technically he was very slick. He threw straight shots a lot. He did some nice feints and counters that, you know, worked really well for him. But Gilbert Burns, now as a fighter, you know, he's got the full, he's got the full game. He's got good takedowns. He's got phenomenal submissions. He's got good stand-up. He's got power. And he landed that damn right hand. How many times? That yeah. right hand hurt Masvidal multiple times in that fight. Uh, he took him down at the you know in the second round, controlled most of it. Masvidal was able to get back to his feet, which we've seen. You know, Ma he's done it so many times. Did it so many times with Usman and everyone else. He's very good at getting back to his feet, but he couldn't really do a lot of offense. And then in the third round, he knew he had to open up, but op by opening up, that gave you know, Gilbert Burns, some openings of his own, and he landed some big shots, yeah. and the big shots hurt Masvidal, and it just, you know, this is what happens as you get older. And, you know, if this is his retirement fight, you know, which he's saying, hey, God bless, dude. You know, he's talked about, hey, I've made a lot of money now, and that's awesome that he is comfortable in his life. He's comfortable in being a person that can be retired from the sport. He's got game-bred boxing, which, you know, I don't know how it did after – a lot of money going out, but hopefully it did really well. And uh, he's been a pleasure to be around, a pleasure for the sport. A guy that's really brought some great moments, you know, the BMF and all those things. You can't say anything bad about a guy that came from fighting on YouTube in backyards to making millions of dollars. Congratulations, Mr. Masvidal. Many won't <clears throat> look at him as like a role model, but I look at oh. like where my life came from and I look at where he came from they're very similar i mean i grew up on yeah. the east side of san jose one of the only white kids in the area fought all the time got chased home a bunch of times fought my fought in my fought in my uh fought in my yard, my yard fought in my with my grandmother and my mother watching um yeah. you know 
there there's been plenty of opportunities like people don't realize like i mean i grew up working in the fields picking apricots prunes all the other things you know with my family and where he came from and the success that he's had and done what he has done i can't do anything but just tip my hat to him man and <laughs> and um we were supposed to fight several times it just never came to fruition like uh his agent that he had before was trying to kept trying to schedule it we just i was getting injured a lot during that time and um it never happened so um but i've, I've always admired him as a fighter like i said i've watched him very carefully because there was a lot of talk of him and i fighting in strike force and just watching him fight the way he dismantled kj noons holy shit if you guys have not seen that fight i mean he just picked him apart it was like target pieced him, he up. Pieced him up it was yeah. target practice yeah. You know, and then uh, people are like, oh, well, he lost to Gilbert. Yeah, he broke his hand in that fight in the first round. He just wasn't the same fighter after he broke his hand. He just couldn't do much. The way he was afraid to throw the hand. Like, he had broke it, I believe, in, like, two places. So it, that changes. That changes everything in how you fight a fight. Um, it just, he, but then when he got, when, like I said, when he got to the UFC, he realized, hey, you know, like, what am I doing? Like, you just go out there and let it all hang out. Like, He's had success. He's a fantastic fighter. He's done so much for the sport. There's not there's not much that I can say. Um, there's there's no, actually nothing I can say about him in terms of being negative. He's a fantastic athlete. He's a fantastic fighter. He's done everything that um, promoters have, have asked him to do, and that's a big deal. And that that means a lot, I think, from <coughs> promoters is hey, go out there, lay it on line. But the Ben Askren fight. Tell me that fight was tailor made for him. Absolutely not. That was one of those, uh, if you get taken down, you're probably going to lose. And yeah. he went out there and made the best of it. He's like, ah, fuck it. What do I have to lose? Go out there, run across. Fly in yeah, me, baby. Exactly. And he worked at it. Worked his career. Practiced it. But that, that's what made his career from then on. And he was, what, 35, 36 at the time? I mean, that was a long time ago. Yeah, Somewhere around there. You know what I mean? But, like, that right there was, they weren't, they weren't setting him up to win that fight. No. And he made the best of it. He's like, so. ah, fuck it. What do I got to lose? Like, they're scheduled. Well, he made the best of yeah, it. Yeah, and they're scheduling me to lose. And the way he did the whole get down on my hands and knees, slap the mat, fall down, all that stuff. I mean, hey, that's what marketed him. That's what got him the BMF fight. And the BMF fight was another moneymaker for him. So he's done everything right since that moment. You know I mean? There's fights where he lost, where he, sh he you know, it was, they were tough fights. It, w it was what it was. The Damian Maya fight. Someone just took him down that's the fight that made me think john that he had a chance in this fight but then i look at that fight and i look at him now years years of distance not only between them but, but not only years damian maya was never a fast fight no that's true and gilbert burns got speed yeah speed kills it's hard to deal with you know and damian didn't have obviously damian had a phenomenal ground game but didn't have a lot of power in his hands. You know, not a lot of speed. Gilbert has both. Yeah. True. Look at Dorino. Man, you really got to give He has become an incredibly well-rounded fighter. He really has. He was very impressive. He was supposed to be my last fight in the UFC. Ooh. Yep, yep. He was supposed to be my last fight. Yeah. And then uh, I got injured. And uh, that's, that's when I got, that's when I got uh, hurt by Pico. So I got dropped by Pico in training and I was supposed to fight him. It was like, I think like three, two or three weeks out. So we had to cancel and that was it. And then, uh, then I ended up have, having to fight, uh, Tony. Fuck. You owe Aaron, you owe Aaron Pico. I, fucking I would have rather fought fucking Dorino. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, all right, let's go. Rob fought, took on Adrian Yanez. <sighs> let's just be honest, man. For two minutes. 50 some seconds, three minutes. That was a fight. They were going. Giannis was looking really clean, really sharp. Font was doing his, you know, best to get inside and land shots and land heavy shots. He took some shots to land those shots. But boy, when he had the opportunity, he landed a, a clean combination. Puts Giannis down, finishes the fight. TKO victory. That's a huge victory for Rob Font. A guy who's really, you know, that's a big win for him because. This was not, you know, when you're looking at it, if you're being honest, you got to say, mm, the UFC, who are they looking at? Are they looking at Rob Font? 
or are they looking at Giannis? They're looking at Giannis to, okay, we're going to give you that test. Mm -hmm. Rob Font said, I'm not going to be your test. I'm going to be your daddy. And he was. Ooh, big words there. Big words there. Yeah, dude, that was a big knockout. I look yeah. at a little. I know Giannis didn't like the stop. It, it was, it was, a, it was a little bit of the, uh, the, the main event, not main event, but like it was like one of those fights where he was putting the pressure, putting the pressure, putting, he got a little carried away, got clipped, got in trouble, couldn't recover. And when yep. you, when you're someone that is slick, like Izzy, like Giannis, you're slick, you're, but you don't have the pop. You've got to keep that lateral movement. You can't, you can't never stop directly in front of them. And that's what happened. He clipped him a little bit, got him in a little bit of trouble, Push, uh, push the pace a little bit, and then next thing you know, he's chasing, left himself open, got clipped a little bit, and then the rest of the fight is history. Once you're fighting, like once you have someone in trouble, step off, land a combination, create another angle, land another combination, create another. You can never settle in front of someone, and that's what happened. And the same thing happened to Alex. The same thing. You settle in front of someone after you get them in trouble or after you hit them with a clean shot, thinking that you're safe. The reality is you're never safe, especially with those little gloves. And yeah, you, you got to admit, Giannis was looking good. He was. He is. He is a slick stand-up fighter, and he's going to be back. You know, this is one of those ones. Yeah, it was going to move him past you know a certain point. He's going to be back. He's that good. But John, we say we say this all the time. Confidence is everything. Yeah, you're this going. You're going. You're going. Uh, no, we'll see. We'll see. Gotta, it's, you got to reestablish it. No, everyone. Ah. Everyone looks at you when you're winning, but they don't. They forget about you after you lose. It's how you recover yeah. and come back. So we'll we'll see. You know, I mean, Rafael yeah. Stotts talks about how great he is. You know, in the training, but I know I know that's training. Yeah. But he says, man, yeah. this kid's good. He's slick. He's good everywhere. So, I mean, he came out. He pushed too hard, I think, and he had some success against someone who's ranked higher than him. Started chasing it. And it led to Got yeah, getting in trouble. Yeah. Kevin Holland taking on Santiago Ponzanibio. I I enjoyed this fight. I enjoyed the fact that uh, Kevin Holland, I like Kevin Holland. I just enjoy watching him fight. He's funny. He was funny afterwards, but he landed a couple of times some heavy shots. Always seemed to land the heavy blows somewhere in the round. And, uh, you know, it went to the third round. But I know Ponzinibbio was not happy with the stoppage. It was a good stoppage. Dan Mariana did a nice stop. You go face down like that, and you have no response as someone is starting to unload on you, and your arms aren't even coming up to block. It's time for the referee to stop the fight. Just unfortunately, when he hit him with the last shot, it kind of brought him back, so he was able to, look, I'm back. Too late. He had already stopped the fight. Yeah, I related this uh, in the live show to the Chandler Patricio thing. Like, if you get hit with like three or four, or two, three, four, or five shots unanswered, and you're not responding, you're not responding. And like the last shot wakes you up. That's like there's there's not much you can do about it. It is what it is, nope. you know. And uh, the ref has a split second to get in there, but two or three shots can be landed by then. Uh, in this fight, like I look at who it is, and I'm like, eh, you know, Pontanillo has been someone to like. Get drop, get rock, face down, ass up, whatever. Come back, fight back, and have and have a way of getting himself back into the fight, and sometimes winning. So, I always we've had this conversation with how many refs, how many times have I come to the ref, it, 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 whether it's a Bellator or any other event. I'm like, hey, why did you stop the fight that early? Well, he's like, well, it was an undercard fight, and these fighters are not as, as experienced as the person who is. In the main event, like in, in the in the five in the main card, I'm like, yeah, I get it. This is a main card fight, though, and we have seen the history of Ponsonibio taking big shots, going down, coming back, you know. So I look at it. I probably would have let him take one, maybe two more, John. I mean, I'm just I'm being honest. If I was a ref, it's okay. Like, ah, you can be honest. One, maybe two more, but I'm not mad. I'm not mad at it. I get it. I understand fighter safety first. All that. All that stuff. So, I mean, and you know me, you've been in the back with me. What do I tell you every time before the fight goes out? Don't stop the fight Don't until stop I stop fight. moving. I'm like, look, <laughs> if I stop moving. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So did he stop moving? Nah. Yeah. He did, but he yeah. woke back up. 
It's like it's one of the, it's one of those. You know, it's it's a weird situation for a ref, right? He's not moving. It is. It's tough. Oh. He's yeah. awake. Uh, it's it's yeah. it's a rough it's a rough. Uh... The, the 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 worst ones is when you see someone you actually see they go unconscious. You see it, and you're racing to get there, and their opponent hits them and it wakes them back yeah. up, and then they're like, "I'm fine." It's like, ah, yeah, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you're not, but okay, yeah. Now you, are. I get it. But uh, good good win for Kevin Holland. He needed he needed that win to stay on track. Yep, and, uh, especially after look the the thing that I really liked about what he did, he fought a semi intelligent fight, and that's the one thing that you know we've seen out of Kevin that you you can really look at and go, oh, you didn't fight smart. Why why did you just why did you not utilize your skill set when you're talking about a guy that's not good on the ground with Stephen Thompson or some of the things that he's done at times. This one. He was in tune with the fight. Yeah, he was talking to people between rounds. Okay, that doesn't bother me. But he was in tune with fighting the right kind of fight against Ponzinibbio. And so, very happy with what I saw. Yeah. Next fight. Yeah, we got Christian Rodriguez taking on the wonder kid, Raul Rosas Jr. And, yeah, this is what happens when you try to fast track an 18 year old. And this is nothing against him at all. He, the kid is talented, Josh. He's got a lot of talent. But, you know, what comes with age sometimes is a maturity, an experience, a knowledge base that you don't have when you're 18. Because when you're 18, you think you know it all and you haven't experienced anything. And Christian Rodriguez showed what a difference in age will make just those seven years. They're very close in fights. I think, you know, Christian was what? Eight and one coming into this. Rosas was seven and oh. But there's a huge difference in what you've experienced and how you deal with those things. And Christian Rodriguez went out there. He fought very uh, smart in the beginning. They had some beautiful sprawls. Rosas got his back, locked in. At one point, a very deep, tight choke. He was able to work his way out of it. And then just took the fight over after that first round. The second round, you could see where, you know, just the maturity. And it's it, this is not saying nothing against Rosas Jr. because I can't expect it out of him. And this is why when you sit there and you go, oh, he's in the UFC, other oh, fast tracking him. It's like it's not the best thing for him. I think he's going to be fantastic. He's got a ton of talent. There's no doubt about it. The kid can fight. He's got a good ground game. But he's got so much to learn in how to implement all those skills and when to do it. And, and I'm being honest, listening to his corner, he needs some help there too. He needs some serious help in that corner because they didn't help him at all. And that's what that corner is for. But great win by Christian Rodriguez and a beautiful display of what being a smart, calm fighter will do for you. Well, it has to go with fight IQ. That's like the verbiage I think you're looking for is fight IQ. Well, I'm I'm trying to stay away from it because it's like I can't say too much about a guy that I can't expect too much fight IQ for just based upon That's true. What what he's experienced and how old he is. Yeah, I mean I, I look it's at tough. like if you have if you have a good coach, good corners, they should be telling you to Control the tempo of the fight when you're in a dominant position. That should go whether you're in the amateurs or whether you're in the low-level shows. You're in the UFC now. Controlling yeah. these fighters and dominating the round and chasing submissions like when you have the opportunity, that that's fight IQ. Chasing them to the point of exhaustion, that's not fight IQ. That's not fight IQ. And so right. when I when I look at and the other thing as well, when I listened to his press conference, I he had already lost the fight. He was talking about guys like Kelvin Gaslam and Chris Curtis being upset that they weren't on the main card. Well, maybe they should be maybe they should do this, maybe they should do that. And ah, I hate that. Comes back to bite you. And though, and and now those two guys are like, yeah, we had a way better fight. Not only did we have a way better fight, we've got way more experience than you. 
Like, and you lost. Like, it just, just, you shouldn't mind those people first off. Just go about your business. You let it get to you. You put yourself on a pedestal, pedestal and it worked against you. Like that, that's the worst position to put yourself in. That's, I, I've always, I've always kind of, for, if you go back in my history with my fighting, I never talk shit. Never. Because that's added pressure on you to perform. That's right. And I go back yeah. and I look at fighters that I've known that were shit talkers. And then once they lost, it was a spiral effect. They never really recovered. Never. It just, they just, they, they had a hard time dealing with whether it was social media trash talk, whether it was people just around, you know, and just the, yeah. the feeling of being at the, at the events and then no longer being the person here. Now you're the person here. And it worked against them. Being the heel is sure it's fun when you're winning, and as soon as you lose, you're it it works against you. It's just all that negative energy you don't need. Anyone can sit there and say whatever they want. When you are the person that everyone is hating and yelling at, it's it's fun as a game, yeah. but eventually it gets to you. It's hard to be that person all the time. It's easy to be, you know, the, the guy that everyone likes. Yeah. It's not it's not easy to be the one that everyone hates. I mean, we talked about this uh last week and and several times before this is that it's a lot of pressure for someone his age, not just his age, but the lack of experience that he has. He has no stand up. Yeah. None. No. And to be a one dimensional fighter going on, not the, enough. on on the main card of a pay per view. Yes. And then to say the things he said, you just added more pressure to yourself. I, I don't understand. I just, I don't get every it. step, every step. And this is what people don't seem to get. Every step you take in this sport, starting out your first amateur fight, you're learning and you're experiencing things that you have never experienced before. And you learn how to deal with those. And then you get your next step, you know, that you're on a different place in the card. And then eventually you're, you turn pro all of these things are building an experience and knowledge base for you to be better as you become that fighter going down the road. But, you know, and this is when, when he was on the Dana White Challengers, you know, Contender Series or whatever, you know, I watched him. I said, man, he, he's talented. He's too young. They should not. They didn't take Bo Nickel, Okay. Now, you want to sit in there and take a look. Bo Nichols a, is a man and a very talented man and a guy that's had a ton of experience. And you didn't take him, but you took Raul Rosas Jr. based upon he had more fights. Okay. I, I've said it too many times. Look, I was in you know athletics for a long time. And when I went to college, I was 17 years old. And, and, and Josh, I got my ass kicked by a guy who was the best in the world at the time at the position he played. He was 24 years of age when I played against him at 17, and I thought I was a badass. And he fucked me <laughs> so bad. And it was where I realized, oh, my God, there's a difference between yep. 17 years of age and 24 years of age. And this is what you just saw in this fight 25 compared to 18 it's the same thing well i mean like i can put it back in like more in perspective also too is you have someone that's a world-class wrestler we went through the same growing pains in bellator with aaron pico yeah world class yeah but young so young and no one wanted to fight him because I mean, he, that's why he ended up fighting who he fought because no one wanted to fight him oh he's he's this he's that he had boxing experience well, and also why well there was other things that were involved you know <laughs> I don't want to get into that. Yeah. I've, I've been asked yeah, not to okay. talk about the that situation. I will, I will not talk about that situation. But I'm I'm being honest when I say too much pressure. Absolutely, because you 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 got to experience things at at a, at a lower level for you to start to feel comfortable with it. It's it's overwhelming. But you look at like uh, Rojas Jr., uh, Jackie Amarin, and you look at Pico. Right, they're used to yeah. spurts in a in a six minute frame yes you that's get right. into a fight that's one round and you saw what you know, like jujitsu whether it's jujitsu whether it's wrestling like they're those their spurts are that short 
And when they're done after that six minutes, seven minutes, five minutes, whatever it is, it's over. It's over. Well, not in fighting. You have more to go. So you can't just keep chasing the submission. Can't keep chasing the takedown. You can't keep chasing the knockout. You've got to make sure that every every time you're in a dominant position, you're slowing the pace down to control the fight. And that's yep. not what we saw from Rojas Jr. Not and I mean it's it, No let's be honest. He went balls to the wall. And as you're wa- I was watching, I'm going. Oh my God, he's pressing mm-hmm. way too hard. He, he better he better just relax, and he couldn't because that's what he knows. Yeah. That's what he knows, and this will be a good lesson. And it, and again, the one doesn't mean anything. The loss doesn't mean it's no big deal. He's he's going to be around, but they need to slow things down. Well, he he he's, he's got to figure out his stand up. He's got a long ways to go. You, with you, at that weight class, you can't. You can't you can't be world class unless you have stand up. There's there's just no way. I mean, like your 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 jiu jitsu is good. We saw tonight. Yeah, that it ain't great. No, I mean he's he's he, he was talking. He, he was already talking about taking on a top five. My my next fight, I want someone in the top five. He's not. He's not he's not. Bad. First off, he ain't taking down Marab. Oh my god! And when he does get Marab down, he ain't. Touching Marab in the in the and that's not even number one guy. Like you look at Aljo, I mean, Aljo was like, "Go ahead, try and take me down. Let's see what happens." Well, see the pro and the problem is this, and you know, he he's trained with Aljo, okay. And Josh, how many times have you seen, you know, in the gym, someone does very well with someone that is the world champ. They do well, but the world champ, how hard is he trying? Mm. Is he really going after you? I mean, okay. he, he might, so, but he also might be like seven rounds in. That's right. You know. All depends on what, what when that moment is that you and him hook up. Boom! Now you're actually going with him. Well, he's already done twenty minutes while you're fresh. Well, okay, makes a big difference. Well, John, we t- we talk about we talk about that a lot. We talk about hey, certain fighters we hear from. Like we don't we don't I don't I don't take into consideration what the fighters say. I yeah, take into consideration the what the trainers in that gym, sure. not the fighters trainers, the no. trainers that work the in guys that, that are gym, outside watching it. Yeah. <laughs> they're the ones that go, Oh, that fighter and that. And the other thing They'll too is I don't take into consideration like, Oh, it's been one week of training. No, I do it over a platform. Hey, that fighter has been to my gym for over two years. That fighter has been to my gym for probably about two, three years. And the two of them have occasionally crossed paths because they probably know they're going to end up fighting each other. So they try to avoid each other. And when they actually do, I've seen who gets the better. So those yeah. are the things. And I also talk to managers, managers that are not the managers of the athletes. And those managers say like, yeah, that guy beats that guy. It makes sense. You never ask the manager of the fighters. They're always my guy's the best. And yeah. I get it. My I guy's the best guy out there. You know? And well, that's what they're supposed to say. But the other thing is the, the number one people that come to us, fighters. Fighters that don't have a a dog in the game. They're like, basically like, I, I see both sides. Dude, all I, I know what they say is I had to stop training to watch. Yeah. And it, I was it, watching these guys. That happens. It's <laughs> like, okay. Yep. That happens a lot. All the time. That happens yeah. a lot. Yeah. Next fight. But, all right. Let's go to the, the, uh, prelims main event, which was a phenomenal say it again, fight John. between. Say Kel- it again. Phenomenal. Prelims. Prelims, yeah. Well, that, there was a little bit of uh, mm. contentious feelings about that, but Kelvin Gastelum taking on Chris Curtis, dude. My hat is off to both of you, gentlemen. Boom, you guys freaking went out there and just slung leather. Great work by Chris Curtis going to the body. Big time shots by Kelvin Gastelum. The dude is still my Roberto Duran of MMA. What a chin! Dude, he took some shots in that thing. And same with Chris Curtis. The only thing that hurt Chris Curtis in that whole thing was a, was a clash of the heads. That's what put him down in the second round. But I, these guys just went out and put it on the line. They gave the fans everything they could ask for. Hell of a fight. Just loved it. Loved it. I was sorry to see anyone lose. That's one of those ones I don't want to see anyone lose. I would like to see a rematch, but in a five-round main event. Ooh. Can I see it? I mean, like, I mean, honestly, it was one of those fights, like you said, that I don't want to see someone lose. Both of them fought their asses off. Um, 
overall just a great fight like this fight when i gave that score to this card this fight was one of the biggest reasons why i gave it the eight and a half to almost a nine absolutely <laughs> is they, la- they laid it on the line and kelvin coming out coming back after you know the layoff coming back after some injuries coming back with all, all the things he had on his mind and just recovering from all that and then chris curtis coming in big power understand that he could hurt you with any shot and Kelvin Gaslam with the speed, the straight shots. They were getting there. Um, just a dog. Like you said, he's your Roberto Duran. It's a fantastic fighter. Someone that yep. I, w- I would watch this fight again. I would watch it again. It's, it really is sad that oh. someone had to lose. But, I mean, I, I I think it was one of the – it definitely was the best fight, I think, for me of the night. That's fantastic. Just, I mean – and you got to look at Kelvin Gaslam coming back from, you know, having some injuries and things that were not going his way, switching camps, you know, doing things different. It's a, it's a big win for him. And Chris Curtis is, you know, he, I think he's found a great home with extreme couture because he's fighting really well out of there, you know, really doing a great job. All right. Luana Pinheiro <laughs> versus Michelle Watterson Gomez. I thought this was a great fight too. <laughs> really enjoyed the whole thing. I actually had Michelle Watterson winning, but it was a close fight. Pinheiro had her moments. Look, I think she landed some of the heavy shots in it, but Michelle Watterson really putting on a great performance and, and the, her utilization of her kicks, you know, knocking someone down multiple times with, you know, a front teep kick. Very well done. Uh, her stance at times, you know, the, the side kick she uses as a jab is really great. Um, Really stopping a lot of what Pinheiro is, is good at with her judo and uh, getting her uh, takedowns and stuff like that. Just a really entertaining fight overall. Yeah, it came down to how the judges scored the the harder shots versus the, yep. the point fighting. And that's kind of where it yep. came down. I had Michelle also winning, but not by much. And I'm not mad. It's not a robbery or anything by any means. So <clears throat> it went no. it went to... Whoever they thought and wherever the angle yeah. of the judge was when they were seeing the damage and being one done. One judge thought Gomez and one two thought Pinheiro. It's okay. But overall, good fight. The two of them good got fight. down, got after it, and good fight. I mean, the style yep. of Michelle is so hard to deal with. It has that um like kind of um MVP slash Stephen Thompson, you know, Stephen Thompson yeah, type, yeah. A little mixture and then the movement. She does you know, she does really well. She's Hard to hard to get a hold of. I'm surprised she didn't utilize more of her wrestling. Except she'll go after takedowns. Yeah, she'll go after takedowns. She will, but she should have utilized a little bit more because she's good. Like she's good from the top position. Her grappling's really good. Yeah. She didn't yeah. use it as much as I thought she would have. <clears throat> yeah, she ha- she has used it more in uh, previous fights, but I mean, great performance by both, in my opinion. Joseph Pfeiffer versus Gerald Mershart. Man. I- I like this Joseph Pfeiffer. He's good. He's 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 got a great story. Super strong. Got big power. He's got speed in his hands at 185. Very fast hands. And he's coming from a good camp. And you, you look and he's you know he's young. He's got a lot of a uh, lot of tread left on the tire. And he's gonna he's gonna do some damage in the middleweights. Can we? Can we get get him a membership to a tanning salon or something? Can we? No, get... no, 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 no. Dude. <laughs> the ginger white look is in. I saw that Merchard had a, a good tan. I think he's down at Florida quite a bit. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, that's that's the difference between living in Florida and Philly. Yeah, so the uh, <laughs> obviously the power is there, the accuracy of the shots, just being patient, didn't rush it, understood what he had to do, touch him, touch him, touch him. Try to force him to shoot a takedown. Just touch him, touch him, touch him, and eventually, boom, knockout was there. So, yeah. nicely done. Exactly. Yeah. Very well done. Lupita Godinez against Cynthia Cavillo. I mean, you know, I was really surprised at the speed difference in the beginning of the fight. I thought Cynthia did a good job of trying to uh, negate a lot of that. by She started throwing straighter shots, good movement. And everything. It was a close fight. Uh, overall, just you know, both both ladies really going after it. I really was impressed. I haven't been that impressed with the the how smart Cynthia Cabello has been fighting lately. I thought she actually fought 
very well. John Woods being her, her uh, coach and she's being out of syndicate there. Very well done. Very well done and fight by both. I'm going to take it the other direction where when you see a fighter who's bouncing from gym to gym, they're lost. Yeah, could be. They need to find a home, figure it out who is best suited for you. And look, this is the thing. <clears throat> find a place that you feel like this is my home. That doesn't mean you can't go train in a bunch of other gyms when you're not fighting. No. Go and, right. go and train everywhere to test yourself, whether it's with new coaches, whether Learn. it's with new fighters. You've got to travel around, become friends with people. I don't know. I don't know what her relationship is with whoever else all around, but she's been at three or four different gyms. I think in the last three or four. Oh five. my god! Yeah. Let's see. Let's be honest. Alpha, Alpha male, where she started, aka yeah. Extreme Couture. Um, Extreme Couture. And now, I think there was another one in there too. It's uh, so it's four or five. Yeah, you're a lost fighter. Like until until you settle and find your and find the people that connect with you, like you're gonna have a hard time really letting it go in the cage. So she's got to figure that out. So whether you're talented or not, like you're just, I feel like she's making steps backwards. She has some gains backwards, gains backwards. So, but next fight, Ignacio Bahamondes versus Trey Ogden. Uh, Bahamondes just looked really good. He's uh you know watched it multiple times. He looked better tonight than I've ever seen him look in the past and he's looked good in the past his stand up is getting better uh cleaner sharper he just completely you know he dominated the fight and he should have you know that's you know Troy came in from what a couple weeks notice and stuff but uh, nice win for Ignacio next fight oh Steve Garcia I'll tell you what this kid's good you know Nerdembeke is, you know, a, a guy you looked at, fought a lot, you know, has fought a lot fairly often. He's good. He's got good power. He's got good wrestling. Steve Garcia got lit up in the beginning of that. He got hurt, bit down, controlled things, slowed it down for himself, kept himself safe. And then the body kick and the knockout, beautifully done. I mean, he. I enjoy watching this kid. He's good. It was the way tough. The it was the the kick to the body, and the follow up right away. Those yeah. two things, which is kind of unheard of. Like some people go to the body and they don't follow up. They go to the body and they'll yeah. go to the head. They go to the leg. Yep. But he he kick to the body and then the left hook. Boom. He realized that he had made contact. Came right back. Boom. I mean, I think he was already done with the body kick. Might have been he touched him, but right. it was definitely it was for sure with the punch. Any, it's so funny because anytime you you feel like you've gotten something to the body, even if their elbow is there, just kick the arm. It's it still hurts. It it makes it even worse. Like it just is one of those things where you just you gotta clench, you gotta try to breathe. You've, the elbow hits the, you know that that the ribs, yeah, yeah. the liver, whatever it is. It just it adds to the pain. Like it's once you get hit to the body and it hurts. Anytime you touch that area. It goes right back it to just it's, it. It sucks. So overall, though, I mean, it was it was definitely a good performance. Fantastic, Sam Hughes taking on your girl, Jackie Amarim. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is again experience, being smart, mm -hmm. knowing I got to go through a little bit of a storm and let that person just burn out a little bit because they're going to go after me, and that's what Sam Hughes did. I thought Sam Hughes looked fantastic. She did a great job of defending in the uh, first round. She was in trouble a couple of times. She worked her way through it. She got herself to the second round. And from that point, she took over in the fight. Sam Hughes is out of Dallas, Fortis MMA, right? I think is yep. where she's at. Great. Yeah. I was listening so, yeah. to the corner. Great job. Great yes. job. After the first round, they said, you took everything she has. She's exhausted. She has nothing for you. She can't take you down. She can't submit you. I want to see you out there, touch, touch, this touch. Is what we expect. Yep, exactly. Yep. We got through that that first round. I mean, yep. Jack. Like I said, I've said this on the live show. Jackie used to live with me with her and her ex husband. They used to train. They used to coach at my gym, uh, the kids' jiu jitsu program. So, um, she's fantastic. She's a savage on the ground. I, if I had to compare her in terms of like level of jiu jitsu, I would say she's right up there, like close to kind of Mackenzie Dern. You know, maybe a little bit lower. Um, once she competed, got to the, the finals, whatever it was, 
kind of got robbed in the finals a little bit. So she never went back and competed really. She just kind of went on to the MMA world and here she is. I mean, um, but when you have never had a fight past the first round, you need to make those yeah. adjust. You need to understand what it's like. You shouldn't have that first fight past the first round in the UFC or in any major organization. You shouldn't like it's whether tough. it's one, whether it's PFL, whether it's Bellator, whether it's UFC, there's, there's just too much. There's too much pressure. There's too much. And I think with her, she had never been pushed to the brink of like, I couldn't get the submission. She used to be in like, you know, so dominant from the top position. We saw that in the first round. Now I will go back to this. We talked about this on the live show. I said, would it have been a 10, eight round? Cause she was so dumb. The, the submissions were so close in that first round. Could it have been a 10, eight round and multiple submission attempts? Wasn't just one. Like Rosas had one. Mm -hmm. uh, she had, I think I want to say three in that round where it was, that's tight. You can see she's, Working and she could have done, you know, a couple other things. You know, uh, it's hard to say sometimes, you know, based upon arm length and everything, what someone can do. You know, one arm chokes are not easy to pull off for anyone, especially the shorter your arms, the worse it is because you can't get to your shoulder or anything to kind of hold on to anything. But uh, it could have been, but it wasn't. And 29 28 for Sam Hughes, she deserved the win. This is the experience, whether you, you cannot chase the submission to the point of exhaustion. You have to control. You have to make them work. You have to control your heart rate. You have to. You got to give yourself. You have got to breathe. You get anybody. I don't care who you are. Everyone gets tired. It's not about, oh, you can't get tired. It's about how fast do you recover? Mm -hmm. And, but I look at, I look at jujitsu wrestling, like the same thing I said earlier, like they're used to pushing for that four to six minutes, whatever it is, or six sprint. to eight or six to 10, whatever it is for them. And it's a sprint. So when they get in there and they realize, oh, I'm getting hit now along with the added pressure of trying to get the submission or trying to get the takedown, they just don't know how to handle it. And they just, it takes way more energy out of them. And then you turn the bright lights on and the walk out, all the energy, the exhaustion, the it's, it, it all builds up throughout that day. And they, yeah. they, maybe they don't think it, but when they get in there and I, you see it, you see the adrenaline dump and you, you see after the first round, they're like, Holy shit. Frank Shamrock used to tell me you'll never get tired in the moment. As soon as you stop moving, Holy exhausted. shit, you're exhausted. You know, and that was, that was this whole thing. Like, and now it has to do with how, like you said, how fast you recover. And yep. that was, that was the biggest thing when he was training for Tito it was like, how fast can I recover? I knew I'd get exhausted. I knew I would try to push Tito to the, to the brink of exhaustion, but how fast can I recover over him? That was his whole yep. thing. I do, I, the one thing I can remember in that fight was I said, I, after I said, he ran him like he was a horse. Mm -hmm. Frank would push, and, and they had a they had a you know thing at thirty seconds. You know, Bory Smith, who was in his corner, would call out thirty seconds, and Frank would just go. He moved, just could create where Tito had to try to burn energy to hold on to him to make things slow down, and he just ran him like a horse to the point of exhaustion, yeah. and that's how he beat him. He beat him with cardio. It's a weapon. It was impressive. He was. He, I think I yeah. honestly believe he was the first guy to utilize cardio as a weapon in the sport. Absolutely. All right. Well, hey, that's going to wrap agree. up our UFC talk. But hey, we're going to get right into OnlyFans. PFL. Oh, oh no, no. Sorry. <laughs> OnlyFans.com. <laughs> OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. Make sure you guys go there. Subscribe to us. It is free, you guys. We take fan questions over there. We do some interaction with our fans over there, some videos. And we will do more live shows on that platform as soon as we get more of you guys on there so let's get them over there so we can have some more interaction with you guys at onlyfans.com slash wayne and it's free subscribe over there no hassles no problems we'll be over there with you guys john what else do we have dave what else do we have what well, dave what do we have yeah, yeah uh dana said in the post fight presser that um pair should go up to 205 that's that's what he wants to see from him what do you guys think about that i i think that's where he does need to be I think that he matches up. You can take a look at, uh, as you would say, Jamahal Hill. And with Jamahal Hill, that would be a good fight. You know, I think uh, Jamal Hill actually has, uh, he's got good power. I think he's a little faster than Alex. 
but Alex is moving up. So you never know how that is going to go. It might, they might match up, you know, the same in speed. I think, uh, I think it's a really good fight. You know, if he got to the championship fight and, you know, I think he would have to maybe win one, you know, one, one fight to get up to that point. Cause there's just not a whole lot of people right now in the light heavyweights that you go, Oh, that's the person that, you know, Hill should be fighting. You know, you take a look at it and you can say, Ankoliev, okay, he had the fight with Blahovich. You know, neither guy looked impressive in that fight, and that's why it's not. Rakic is hurt. Anthony Smith, you know, probably not. Uh, Krylov has been fighting well and stuff. Johnny Walker's coming back. But other than that, you know, looking at it, you could put Alex Pereira in there right away. Give him one fight. See how he does. Put him against the man right now, Jamahal Hill. I mean, but he's got to get one fight there before you have him fight for the title. I said that. I know. I understand. But when I'm looking at that, who do you have him fight? Uh, okay. You could have him fight Anthony Smith at number five. Could you not? You could. And I think Anthony's got a fight coming up. Krylov would be, Krylov likes to wrestle a little bit more than Anthony, but Anthony's been turning, has turned more into a wrestler. Johnny Walker's a guy you could put him against. Johnny Walker likes to stand up. You know, all those. You know, I, I the worst fight on that roster right now for him would be Ankoliev. Yeah. I mean, unless Ankoliev, like, he doesn't utilize his wrestling, so. <laughs> he should. Yeah, he should. I mean, I think he would in that fight. Yeah. You know. I mean, who knows? I, I I look. I agree with you. When I was looking at this, I would say Anthony Smith, and th- nothing against Anthony Smith, but, a- no, but Anthony would that. stand with him. I think Anthony would potentially try the takedown, but he would try the takedown. You know, but I mean, you know, I don't. I don't think unless you get. I honestly believe unless you get him right to the title shot, I don't think he gets past any of them. Okay. I mean, he's seven and one now. I mean, just there's just no. Maybe, no, maybe, yeah, maybe I'm underestimating his grappling. I just, I don't know. I think the guys, the guys there, they're, they're all, I think, smart enough to just take him down. Yeah. That would be smart. Yeah. All right. Next. What else you got for us, Dave? Uh, Robbie Lawler and Rory McDonald get inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. God damn, it's about time. You know, you, you take a look at nothing, no offense to any fight that they've put in. They've put in some good fights. This is the fight, Josh. This should have been, you know, I, Dana's favorite fight has always been the Frank Trigg versus Matt Hughes second fight. And, and you look and it's like, why? Because Matt got kneed in the nuts and was crumpling over and Yamasaki didn't do anything about it. So he let Frank get a free run at him. And yeah, he picked him up and turned it around and he won. It was great. It was not that fight. That, that's that his fight, favorite fight. Yeah, that's his favorite fight. I swear to God, it is. I'm Shut not kidding. Shut your mouth. We've, Seriously? we've talked about it. I swear. He just said oh, that's his favorite gosh. fight. Yeah, but this fight, I will tell you, I was lucky enough to be in there with those guys. Those guys left parts of themselves in that, in that cage forever. And just, I mean, the, the, the guts that went into that, the heart and the the pain that those guys were in at times, and you know, there, there's a there's a video that is out. It's one of my favorite moments, and you know, knowing I've known Robbie since he was 18 years old, and uh, you know, I refereed Robbie too many times, and you know, between that fourth and fifth, you know, when the fourth round stopped, there was that famous. They were kind of you know, mad dog in each other. And I, I knew that Robbie was back there, but I, you know, I was just, I was so concerned with getting Rory back to his corner. So the cut man could work on him and help, you know, stop some of the, you know, damage that he was having that, you know, that's how that whole thing happened. And then, so I turned around from that as soon as I got Robbie to go back and, you know, I'm, Rory to go back and Robbie was, you know, now in his corner. I go over, I'm just looking to make sure he's seeing what he's got. And he's got the cut on his lip is, you know, his it's cut all the way through. He's got that big old gash. It's about three inches long on his top of his head. 
And I just look at him and said, how you feeling, Robbie? I feel fucking great, John. I'm having a fucking blast. Right? And I was like, okay. Yeah, and I just love uh, that moment. I love that moment and the way that he reacted because he was, that was his moment. That was the greatest fight he ever fought. My my relationship with Robbie goes back to he fought Lennon Showalter. I think it was in yeah yeah, and I was, that was watching, a long time ago. I was watching him warm up in the back, and I'm like, this kid's fighting in Hawaiian shorts with like a little bit of an afro that was kind of curly. Yeah, he had a, he had a little fro. And shit, he starched him in like 19 seconds. Yeah. It was nasty. And I was like, holy shit, who is this kid? And literally, it's like, Super Brawl. What? Couple, was it in Super Brawl? No, no. It was somewhere, I think it was at like Calusa or it was it was oh, at okay. a small casino up that way. And um, after that fight, a couple months back, we ended up being on the same card. It was probably like almost a whole year removed. We were on the same card in Hawaii for Shogun. And then that's when Dana came out and scouted all of us. We all kind of got recruited off of that fight. But that he was something that we we just kind of kept an eye on him the whole time his his aaron riley fight historic you know that's they matched him up with the right person for his first fight he was a dog he just came in like just just big power um he had some issues he just did you know like and you talk to pat you talk to everyone else i mean he was going through i don't know what he was going through i can't i can't speak on it to be honest i can't um but he had a resurgence. He left, excuse me, he left, went to Pride, then went to Strike Force, and he legit just during that process found that, like, hey, oh, this is my chance after the UFC bought them. I'm here. Like, he's had success in Strike Force, he was having success in other organizations. And they had kind of, you know, the UFC had given up, like, given up on him. He was, he seemed like he was lost. Him to get back there and become who he was and yep. to remind the world that like, hey, I got this. I got this in, in my back pocket. I can do it whenever I want. I just got to turn it on. Like, holy shit, where's this Robbie been? You know, and he yeah. was fantastic in Strike Force. Fantastic. His fight with um, Melvin Manoff. Oh, oh. he's getting eaten up. I his I, I just I never wanted to be kicked like that ever. <laughs> I never wanted to be kicked like that. And just to see the extent boom, done. Lights out, touched on the chin, over. Holy shit. Just to see someone take that amount of damage to the inside leg, outside leg, all around, and never ever did he think like, ah, I'm done. No, he just slowly stalked after you, boom, threw the big shot, landed clean, Melvin Manoff yep. out. And then when oh, he got yeah. to the UFC, just it was a whole different. And that was at eighty five. Then I think there was a conversation. From what I understand, there was a conversation between him and Dana. Is that hey, you're coming back? We want you back. You've got to fight at seventy. He made the change, and look where his career went. Fantastic, yep. fantastic. And this fight, absolutely one of the greatest fights ever in uh, UFC yep. history, hands down, no doubt. But again, the thing like you're saying, it takes two. Yeah. And it took a guy as tough as Rory McDonald, mm-hmm. a guy that had fought Rory, that fought Robbie, if you recall, and lost to Robbie and was crushed that he lost him, didn't think that he did. And so this was a rematch. And then this one was for the you know the title since Robbie was now the champion. And you looked and it takes two because Rory McDonald, his nose was broken in that first round. He was what we call aspirating blood throughout the fight. And when I say aspirating, that means that he's he's breathing in because he can't breathe through his nose, so he's breathing in through his mouth. So the blood that's dripping down the back of his throat from his no- broken nose is being sucked into his lungs, and it's creating a problem for him as far as that oxygen being, you know, put through his body the right way. And that's why you can see, and, and Rogan will talk about, you know, he was turning gray. That's because there was not that oxygen transfer. That's what I was so concerned with during the fight, watching him, because I could see what was happening to him. And he never stopped. He never, ever. And, you know, and he was winning the fight. I'm just being honest. He was winning the fight. You know, I know on the judges' scorecards, they had him winning the fight. 
you know robbie needed to do what he did and he did it man and that's what made it just incredible well when you take fights like this though john and neither one of these fighters were ever the same after this fight nope and nope. when people say like oh they left a piece of them in there no they left a lot of them a lot yes. of themselves in that for who for the fans for themselves for yep. you know i mean basically like for the promotion for the for everything they they went out there and laid it all on the line and gave everything they had like i can't say enough about those fights and those fighters because you know how hard it is to bury your ego and just be like you know what fuck it let's just go let's just do it and see what happens and it, it takes a lot for anyone to just be like throw caution in the wind and let's just see what happens like too much pride too much ego <clears throat> gets involved and that's the sad part is that there's epic fights like this that could happen but someone's ego gets in the way and you never really get to see it i mean they they, they left a lot of themselves in that cage that night and all i can say is thank you that's it yep that's it next congratulations right. to them both <clears throat> Wrap up on Nunez versus Pena 3, scheduled for UFC 289 in June. Right back to again. <laughs> I, I don't. I, okay. You know, I, 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 I see what you're saying, I, but seriously, Julie, Juliana Pena, I, I love her as a fighter. She held on to the title after one win. She didn't get the second win. And I thought Amanda absolutely deserved the rematch. Here, I think Juliana needs to go and get a win and then do the rematch later on. Give somebody else that opportunity at the title. But, yeah, it is what it is. Who, but who, but who's somebody else, John? <laughs> who, who, who's somebody else? <clears throat> Can you pull it up, Dave? Really, really, if you t if you think about it, and you take a look at the the bantamweight division, you know it's questionable as far as who. But you know you've got certain ones that you could look at. You know, does Raquel Pennington deserve a rematch? Eh, she's been fighting well. She's gotten wins. Uh, Aldana, she's looked you know fairly well. Caitlin Vieira, didn't she just lose? I'm thinking thought so. I thought so. I'm but I think with just Raquel lost. just had a baby, so I think they're kind of taking some time. Yeah. You know, so they they probably want to enjoy this uh, this moment and just probably not focus on that right now. So uh, Holly Holm, I think she needs another one. Uh, Caitlin, I I think she did just lose, but who did she lose to? I can't recall. Yeah, I don't know who she lost to. But, uh, but I'm thinking I, th she I thought did. she I thought she lost her last fight. Well, she she lost to Holly Holm. I remember that. Oh, Raquel, <laughs> that Raquel makes sense. Pennington. Thank <laughs> that you. That makes sense. No, she beat Holly Holm. Never mind. Yeah. What am I saying? She lost. She beat Holly Holm and then lost to Raquel Pennington. Okay. Mm. But it was it was a close fight. It was split. I mean, it makes sense if you think about it. Right, you're gonna have uh, Juliana Pena fight her for the title. Probably after that, the dust will settle. Raquel will fight her again. Or a fight, uh, Amanda Nunez. She'll fight her probably after that. So that'll give her enough time to, hey, spend time with, you know, the wife, yeah. the kid, you know, just spend some yeah. time at home with family and then focus back okay. on training camp. It makes sense. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Uh, there's a storyline there too. You got to, that for them in this weight class, they've got to bank on, they've got to bank on that. They've got to, they got to bank on that fight right now because that fight may never come back again. So, I look at the same way with Alex and Izzy. <laughs> you better bank on it now. You better bank on it now because I don't think you it's You might be right back. with it. You might be right. Uh, well, hey, there's a there's something else I want to say, though, too. As you guys can see, I'm wearing a Manscaped shirt. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed our Manscaped commercial. John and I had some fun <laughs> goofing around, playing around with it. But that is awesome. We had a great time. And uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoy, enjoyed the commercial. Also, uh, go to OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. Subscribe to our channel over there. We've got fan questions available there and uh, some content with you guys. Extra content is available on there, on that platform. So we want to get closer to our fans. 
not in that way, you guys. But we want to get closer to you guys and uh, engage with you guys a little bit more. So uh, head over to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne In. And subscribe to us. It is free. Uh, go to WayneInMerch.com. Pick up some of our sweatshirts. Uh, John, you see what I did there? And hoodies and short sleeves. Those, Summer those is coming. It was hot today here. It was kind of muggy, though. A little overcast and muggy in California. Uh, in the Bay Area. But uh, it was nice. We had a great time today. And uh, short sleeves are available now. So some hats, short sleeves, long hoodies. And I was, oh, John, look at that hat. I like that hat. That's my, ah, I, like that. I like that original logo, but you know, podcast Dave keeps telling us <laughs> to stick with the one we have. And I do like the one we have also. I do. I do. All right. Well, Hey John, uh, this is what three in the morning for you right now. And, uh, we do it for the yeah. fans. We do it Something for the like fans, that. but why don't you take, us, take us away? Oh, uh, well, the first thing I want to say is for everyone out there that enjoyed the manscape commercial. I cannot tell you how good Josh looks when he is well-groomed. Mm-hmm fantastic all about baby especially especially only with half a suit so for out there, i hope you enjoyed the ufc as much as we did i think we'll talk about pfl next time because it's just too much too much three in the morning so everyone out there thanks for tuning in we'll see you